strike him in for a while? I gotta get swinging on that history paper. Ooh, you don't mention it. I haven't even picked the topic yet. Yeah, well, stay away from the Punic Wars. They're mine. <laughs> you can have them. <laughs> Goodbye, Connie. See you tomorrow. Bye. Afternoon, Miss Caldwell. Hi, Henry. Charlie J, what fun. Got any idea where Brock is? Nope. Not the slightest. When does he leave for college? I don't know. I haven't been informed. Not uh, your brother's keeper? Oh, Charlie, that was a sparkler. Huh? Not my brother's keeper. I mean, most boys with your good looks wouldn't even bother to try and develop a personality. You know, for a kid your age, you've got a pretty big head. Yeah. It's all those vitamins Mama feeds me. With tea. I'm going to take a shower. Goodbye, Charlie. Well, maybe I can scrub you back. That would be dull. You think so? Come on, Charlie. Huh? Well, what's the big rush? I'm hot. I'll bet you are. No. Grace, please. Charlie, stop it. Grace. Grace, I love you. I hate you. <laughs> But you don't hate this. <laughs>
Hi, Mom. What kept you, boy? Kept me? I broke a record getting here. It's half an hour since I phoned the order. Oh, come on now, Mom. You know, the Colwells are not the only customers Mr. Doyle has. They are when I'm working for them. Emma? Have you seen Grace? No, ma'am. Oh, Mrs. Caldwell. You know my son, Roger. Hello, Roger. Caldwell. He's studying to be an engineer at the university. How wonderful. Can I help with anything? Yes, Connie, you can find Grace and tell her we're ready to serve. Yeah. They'll let you come home whenever you want? Well, just about. That's a big difference between Yale and prep school. They uh, aren't always trying to blow your nose for you. Rock, have you seen Grace? I've been able to see her for years. <laughs> Grace, your mother's looking for you. Oh? Uh, You'd better go in first. Use the back door. Okay. What are you turning into, some kind of a nursemaid? Oh, honey, I'm not that stupid. Ordering people around. Your mother asked me to find you. Well, you go tell her you didn't. Stop being such a snoop. I don't care how stuffy it was. This is your party. These are your guests. You have an obligation to them. You happen to be the hostess. I know that, Mama. Well, then go on in and start acting like one. Grace, is anything wrong? No. Well? Still too high, Emily. Well, I'm taking the pills twice a day. How's Grace? All right. That's what this is, you know. You're going to worry yourself into a sanitarium over that daughter of yours. I can't help it. I'm scared. Do you have anything specific to go on? No, it's just a feeling. She tells me she's going over to Connie's after school. And I phone, and she's not there. Well, suppose she is seeing some boy. It doesn't automatically follow. Then why make such a secret of it? I keep feeling that if Will were alive, he'd know what to do. Emily, Emily, it's the oldest problem on Earth. Nobody's ever whipped it. Can't keep our kids locked up for 24 hours a day, and we can't be with them every minute of the time. When they're 15 years old, we tell them, sex is dynamite, don't touch it. And six or seven years later, they come around and tell you they're going to get married. We say, okay, fine, play with the dynamite. It's okay, she's not home. How do you know? Her car's not in the garage. Let's go in, huh?
Charlie, what if she comes home? I'll hear the car. Charlie? Charlie, I know you're there. All right. What's the fuss? And I know who's with you. I saw you sneak in. Well, turn on the light. We just came through the door for Pete's sake. And we weren't sneaking, Mrs. J. Oh, you weren't? No, we weren't. Grace Caldwell, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. I ought to be ashamed of myself. For what? Mom, for Pete's sake. You shut up. Your father will take care of you. I hate to say this, Mrs. J, but you have a dirty mind. You're down here in the dark behaving like a couple of alley cats, and I have a dirty mind. A dirty mind and a dirty mouth. And I don't have to listen to it. I'll you. You will not. Don't bother, Charlie. Well, hello, Grace. Hello, Mr. J. How's your mother? Admit it, you little animal. I know you've had her here before. Do you think the neighbors don't tell me what goes on in this house when I go out? It's all the screaming about. George, I want you to come down here. Our fine gentleman of a son has found himself a mistress. Mom, that's not so. Don't lie to me! I am not blind! I was not born yesterday! What was Grace Caldwell doing here? Charles? Tell your father what Grace Caldwell was doing here. That sweet, refined little slut. What's your mother talking about? He knows what I'm talking about. Pop. Is it true? Don't look at me with those cow eyes. I want a straight yes or no answer. Is it true? You maniac! Put your hands down. Are you crazy or something? What are you trying to do, get yourself put in jail? She wanted me to. She asked me to. She's a minor. Don't you know anything about the law? She wouldn't tell. Wouldn't tell? Why, you boneheaded punk. I'm not going to waste time talking about right and wrong. That's just for squares like your mother and me. What do you think would happen if that girl got in trouble? You think she'd be quiet then? What if she got pregnant? Well, that, that doesn't mean that I'd be the one. What? Well, it wouldn't! I know another boy she's been with. Sc Scotty Bordner. Caldwell residence. Uh, just a moment, please. Mrs. Caldwell, it's for you, Mrs. J. Oh, thank you, Emma. Hello? Not at all. It's nice to hear from you, Mrs. J. Oh. Well, if you think it's that important, I certainly want to know. Please, go on.
Ready for bed? Just about. I almost forgot to brush my hair. Finish your homework? Oh, but the Spanish, I can do that in study hall. Grace. What's been going on between you and Charlie J? Nothing. I just got a call from his mother. She told me what happened this afternoon. I'll bet she did. Well, I'm sorry if I was disrespectful, but I don't like being accused of things I haven't done. She said you and Charlie were making love. That's a lie. She said Charlie admitted it. And that's a lie. Grace, it's all very well for you to keep saying that's a lie. Mama! We were necking, just necking. I don't expect to get a gold star for that, but it's a long way from what she's talking about. It certainly is. She didn't even see us. I don't know where she gets her ideas. I just told you. From Charlie. Charlie probably admitted we were necking, and her dirty mind did the rest. What do you call necking? I told you nothing happened! Then why can't you discuss it calmly? Because you won't take my word! Baby, this is not something to argue about. I'm worried. I want to help you. I don't need your help. I didn't do anything wrong, and I'm not a baby. Grace, please. Mama, that woman accused me of some terrible things this afternoon, and now she's got you believing them. Well, I won't live in a house where people think that about me, so either you take my word, or I'm going to pack and leave right now. Very well, dear. I'll take your word for it. Mama! I'm sorry I didn't mean it. I never leave you, I just said that. Come to bed. It's late. I love you, Mama. I love you too, dear. Dr. O'Brien, please. This is an emergency. I've had several long talks with you, Mother Brock. And I've seen this condition develop. You know, I've been your family doctor for many years. The central problem is... Well, I'll uh, leave it up to you. Is she any better? Oh, she's getting her strength back, Grace. It's slow, yes, but it's happening. She's going to need a full-time nurse for the next few weeks, and after that, I think maybe a little temporary change of climate might be helpful, someplace where it's warm and sunny. Uh, whatever you think, sir. I, uh... I heard you say something about a central problem. Mm, it's mainly a matter of avoiding any emotional strain. She needs rest and quiet, peace of mind. The kind of things you can't order at the corner drugstore. Well, we'll see that she gets them. You're the only ones who can. I'll drop by on the way home tomorrow. <clears throat> Goodbye, Dr. O'Brien. Thanks, Walter. Come and 
study for a minute. I want to talk to you. Close the door. Oh, look, Grace. Rough. I don't care if Emma hears this, but you might. Do yourself a favor. Dr. O'Brien just gave me quite a speech upstairs about you. Oh? What about me? And Charlie J. and God knows who else. That's a lie. And what were you and Mother fighting about? It's none of your business. Why don't you start growing up, Grace? Mother nearly died, you know that? That's official. That's O'Brien talking, so let's quit fooling around. I didn't know it was that bad. It is that bad. Oh, Grace, you've got her nearly half crazy. She's afraid you'll turn into a tramp. She said that? That's what she's thinking. It has to be. Are you in love with Charlie? No, I hate him. See the first? Oh, look, Grace, I know this is hard to talk about, but... Yes. He was the first. I thought I loved him, and then I found I could feel the same way about someone else, someone different. Grace, that isn't love. No. But it's being wanted and needed and held close. It's almost love. Almost love? You don't have to settle for that. I'm not settling. Oh, I just don't get this. You talk like a girl who's... She's got nothing else in her life who nobody cares about. No. Well, that's the way it sounds. I don't care how it sounds. When I feel that way, I can't think of anything else. It doesn't matter who I am or what I'm supposed to be. Nothing matters. I can't help it. Well, Grace, I'm the last guy on earth to be giving lectures, but you're my sister. We've got to do something about this. I know. That'll tear you to pieces. Maybe you could talk to a doctor. No. No, I can't. At least it's worth a try. I can't. I'm too ashamed. Grace, look, they don't, they don't give lectures. They try to help. You just said you can't help yourself. All right. All right, I'll think about it. Maybe after Mom is better. That could be a long time. I said I'd think about it. Besides, what'll they tell me? Control yourself. Not just that, no. Well, that's what it all comes down to. Well, I try, Brock. I do try, but sometimes it just doesn't work. Grace. From now on, it has to. I know, Brock. I know. say it's definite, you've been stood up. Oh, brother, you and your big college friends. Not my college friend, Paul Rutherford, goes to Princeton. I thought you said the Tate boy went to Yale. Oh, that's right, Mother, went. He graduated the year before I got there. What time is it? Uh, five after eight. Oh, brother. Yes, madame. Well, at last, a wayfaring stranger. Uh, blame me, I'm the heavy, we got lost. I'm really sorry, Mrs. Caldwell. It's good to see you, Paul. Well, may I say that you're looking great? You certainly may. How can you get lost between Lebanon and Fort Penn? There's only one road. Well, it isn't easy. Oh, uh, Mrs. Caldwell, I'd like to present uh, Mr. Sidney Tate. How do you do, Mrs. Caldwell? And that's Miss Grace Caldwell, Betty Bordner, Connie Shokestall, and that is Brock Caldwell of the Loud Mouth. <laughs> Glad to meet you, Sidney. How do you do? Paul, you sit next to Connie and Sidney. 
Yes, it is. It's really my fault we're late. I asked uh, Paul to make a detour so I could look at a farm over near Cedarton. Farm? Yes, I, I want to buy one. Well, if you're going into real estate around here, city property is your best bet. Oh, uh, may we quote you, Mr. Kiplinger? Well, it is. I suppose you're right, but this won't only be an investment. You see, I uh, want to live there, actually work it. Oh, back to the land. In a way. You sound as though you have farming in your blood, Sidney. Oh, no, Mrs. Caldwell, I come from a long line of Wall Street brokers. What does your family think of this idea? Well, they keep telling each other I've had a nervous breakdown. You don't strike me as the type, Sidney. For farming? For nervous breakdown. <laughs> Madame? <laughs> Shall we order? I began to think that this was the biggest pullback I'd ever seen. And was he? No, it's just that every time he came by, I was lying down. <laughs> <laughs> oh! I'm terribly sorry. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> I think that pullback is still following you. Oh, no, I'll uh, get him on the next play. Uh, would you mind very much if we watched the next play from the bench? Whatever you say, Coach. Uh, why don't we go to the bar? Are you old enough? Of course I am. Well, that's older than you look. Well, I am older than I look. Would you like to argue the point? I wouldn't think. <laughs> You're stormy and wild, a turbulent child of reckless way. <laughs> well, pretty thirsty out tonight. Yes, indeed. You stay here. I'll try to get a table. My gosh, I hardly knew you. Well, you haven't changed. Oh, sure I have. It's just not visible. Where have you been? Philadelphia, working on a newspaper. Just got back last month. Oh, there you are. I was afraid you'd fallen overboard. Oh, uh, Amy, this is Grace Caldwell. Grace, this is Amy, my wife. How do you do? Well, congratulations. I didn't know you were married. Three years in August. Well, that's great. Any children? No, uh, not yet. Jack, do you know where I left my stove? Well, I think Joe has it. Excuse me. Uh, are you back for keeps? Well, I hope so. Doing what? Well, you ought to know. I'm an employee of yours. I'm the Sentinel? Assistant city editor. That means I can have you fired, huh? <laughs> on the spot. Well, let's see. It all depends on how the tennis lessons go. When do we start again? Oh, Grace, I haven't had a tennis racket in my hand for years. But if you, if you really like to, sure. Jack? Of course we Sorry. Good night, Grace. Good night. Nice meeting you, Amy. Yes. Grace! Grace! We've got two at the bar. <laughs> Champagne cocktail, please. Yes, ma'am. Do you have any draft beer? Yes, sir. Well, farming, draft beer. I bet you smoke a pipe. Would uh, you like to try? Oh, wouldn't you be surprised if I didn't? Yes. Oh, <laughs> well, you got me on that hook nicely. What's wrong? I just saw someone I don't want to. Oh? A boy. Is he looking? Well, uh, which one? I've got a lot to choose from. Tall, dark, toward the end of the bar. He's not only looking, he's headed this way. Would you rather leave? I should say not. Why should we leave? How's it going, Grace? Charlie J, Sidney Tate. How do you do? Yeah. Don't I get a holo? Hello. I'd like to buy a little drink. No, thank you. Yo, know, Tad, another round here, hmm? I guess you didn't understand her, Charlie. She said no thanks. Well, I probably know Grace a little better than you. And just because she says no, she doesn't always mean no. Apologize. What do you think he's... I said apologize or I'll tear your head off. 
For what? Outside. Oh, look, go on. I don't want to fight you. Then don't. It'll be over faster. Come on, come on, break it up. All right, now that's it. Please, please, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Please be seated. Everything is all right. What happened? He just, uh, forgot his manners. In a minute. Listen, I'd, uh, I'd like to see you again before you and your mother go away. All right. Well, how about uh, next weekend? I could drive down Saturday morning. That would be wonderful. again. Oh, thank you, darling. Now, I'll get it. This just now arrived, Miss Cole. Thank you. Is it a bit soon to clear off the dinner things? Uh, no, you can take them. What's he doing in San Francisco? Is it from Sydney? Mm-hmm. Oh, he says his firm sent him there on some kind of a survey. He says, don't write me any more glowing reports about the weather in Nassau. Last night, we had two inches of rain. <laughs> Will that be all, Miss Cole? Yes, thank you. Oh, no. On the way out, he stopped to look at a farm in Ohio. I had a feeling he meant business about that. Sends his love to you and hopes we're enjoying ourselves. Oh. Here, you can read it. Maybe later my eyes are a bit tired. Would you like to go over and listen to the music? No, I don't think so. Maybe later I'll go down and take a swim. Maybe this trip hasn't been very exciting for you. Don't be silly. Oh, I thought there'd be more young people here. I don't miss them. Strange. All of a sudden, young people seem so... <laughs> so young. As compared with Sydney? I guess. You know, sometimes I... What were you going to say? I don't know, really.
I've just about given you up for tonight. What do you think it's about time you took that down? Miss Grace won't let us. Good morning. Good morning, Brock. We're not due at the lawyer's office until 10. Would you like a cup of coffee? Thanks, Emma. Yes. Yes, fine. Will Grace be coming with us? No, she doesn't care about it. Brock, are you keeping after her? What do you mean? Your mother's death simply wasn't Grace's fault. Anyone with a heart condition like that. I've told her. I've said it until I'm hoarse. Excuse me. It's Mr. Tate to see Miss Grace. I said she wasn't having any callers. Sidney, but... come in. Hello, Brock. Sidney Tate, this is Dr. O'Brien. Hello, Mr. Tate. Doctor? Well, I'm sorry that uh, I couldn't make it here for the funeral. Now, Grace showed me her letter. That was very thoughtful. How is she? Well, not bad. Paul wrote me that she was having a pretty rough time. For a while there. Would you like a cup of coffee? No, thanks. Brock, uh, I'd like to see her. Well, it's important. She's up in her room. Do you want to tell her I'm here? Why don't you tell her? All right, I will. Goodbye, Doctor. Mr. Tate. San Francisco. All the way. Mama saved everything I ever wrote her. Hey. Let's take a ride somewhere. I don't think so, Sydney. Come on. I want to talk to you. My father was born in. He used to come here every summer. Don't you miss it? No. It wasn't the same after he died. He used to take us riding and we'd go swimming in the lake. It made us work, too. You sound proud of that. I am. You know, my uh, place wouldn't fit into one corner of this. You bought a farm? I'm uh, going to make an offer 
on the one in Ohio that I wrote you about. That's uh, the main reason I'm here, to see what you think of the idea. What idea? Living on a farm. Would you marry me, Grace, and live on a farm? I'm in love with you, Grace. Maybe I have. Maybe I picked uh, the wrong time, huh? No. I thought about it. I guess I even dreamed about it. Well, don't you think that uh, your mother would have approved? Would have thrown her hat in the air. Well, what's wrong? Sydney, I have to tell you something. I love you, and I think I could make you very happy. God knows I try, but... Well, I've done some foolish things. Some bad things. They weren't meant to be bad, but... Well, I guess you know what I mean. Why did you tell me that? Because I had to be honest. I think with you, I could find the kind of life I'm looking for. I know how much I need love and how much I have to give. I'm ready to give all my love to you, Sydney. But I had to tell you. I'd still like an answer. Oh, Sydney, I'd be proud to marry you. You won't mind living on a farm? Not if you're there. Sydney? Mm -hmm. Listen. Listen. And, and don't get angry. I won't get angry. Why, Ohio? What? But this is here. It's mine. Brock gets the house in town. Oh, no, no. Why not? Well, this is your farm. Well, you could buy it. No, it would take years. Well, we've got all our lives. No. Well, let's go take a look at it. That can't hurt. It won't make any difference. Well, then it can't hurt. Well, Come but on. Grace, now wait. Come on! Come on. Please. Watch it, my cup runneth over. <laughs> I've got hot stuff here. I've got the bride and groom. Um, wow. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think you'd want to forget this. Oh, oh. surely not. Thank you. Now, just the bride and groom, please. Yeah, oh, no, no. oh, Mr. Tate, how about a refill? Well, 12 is usually my limit, but uh, just this one. Oh, good. I'll lead you to the well. Ready? Tell me, uh, where are you, where are you two staying in New York? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. And then I thought we'd drive up to Maine for a week or so. It's a little uh, early in the season, but Dad's had the cottage open. Cottage, he calls it. I've seen pictures. You can play soccer in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on, come on. I gave the girl away. Now get her out of here. I'm due back to the hospital in half an hour. Go. Oh, God. <laughs> Goodbye. You look lovely, dear. It was a beautiful day. Congratulations, Sydney. All the best. Thank you very much. <laughs> Cheers. Ah, uh, awfully pretty. Thank you. And all brides aren't, you know, beautiful. I have covered enough weddings to be an expert. Whatever happened to our tennis game? Frankly, I was afraid you might beat me. Oh, <laughs> any old time. <laughs> I get to kiss the bride. No waiting. Getting fresh. Not you. Am I interrupting? Of course not. Excuse me. Making up for lost time? Oh, Amy, 
she's an old friend. Wipe your mouth. Wait for me, will you? I'm so proud today. Oh, come on now, Mom. Come on, we're running late. Graduation starts in 15 minutes. All right. I'm ready. I thought you was in such a hurry. I told you if you threw it out one more time, it would stay out. All right. One more time. This is the last. <laughs> Not nice. Oh! Roger Bannon is here to see Mr. Sidney. Who? You remember Mrs. Bannon? He's her son. He came to see about some work on the farm. Oh, yes. I told him Mr. Sidney wasn't back yet, but he said he didn't mind waiting. Thank you, Emma. Yeah. That's a good boy. Yes, you keep it easy. That's my baby. I'm Roger Bannon. How do you do? Hope I didn't frighten you. No, not at all. I uh, thought I'd take a look at the barn before your husband got home. Oh, well, I'm sure he wouldn't mind. You don't remember me, do you? Yes, I think I do. Well, I've been in the Army the last three years, the Engineer Corps. How nice. Oh, boy, that's a fine-looking boy you have there. How old is he? Two. Jan, how you doing? I never got a chance to tell you how sorry I am about your mother. Thank you. I don't suppose you'd like to show me the barn. What? Well, I don't know my way around here very well. I 
I'm sorry I'm late, Bennett. Have I kept you waiting long? Oh, no problem. Just got here. Yes? Hello, darling. Any calls, honey? No, no calls. You know, I stopped in at the bank to make another payment. I don't think that Brock likes his new job very much. Well, if he doesn't, he can always promote himself. <laughs> Have you uh, seen the barn yet? No, not yet. Well, you'll notice that the whole southwest corner seems to be settling. I don't know whether it's the foundation or the ground underneath or what. Well, why don't we take a look at it? I see you, Mr. Tate. Goodbye, Mr. Bannon. You'll notice that the floor is sagging at that end. And also that the beams up in the roof seem to be splitting, too. Mm -hmm. I would have done it myself. You know, the more I think of it, I don't see how he can break even. Who? Bannon. He's only charging $1,500 to fix the barn. Then why is he doing it? Because he's a smart Irishman. He must have gone in pretty deep to start that construction company. Right now, the best thing he can do is line up a lot of satisfied customers. The next time around, they'll pay off like slot machines. Elsie Martindale called tonight hinting about the carnival. The women's auxiliary wants to give it here again this year, do you mind? Not if you don't. <laughs> We're getting to be an institution. That was the idea all along. Not in the mood, my lady. What do you mean, not in the mood? Take Billy and go up to the cottage for a while. Sydney? I love you. I'll always love you. Stop pouring now, Mac. Who's that? Huh? That man. Oh, that's Roger Bannon. Well, what's he staring at? I can't imagine. Grace, is everything all right? What do you mean? You know. Certainly. Well, are we going to sit here all day? We're going shopping. Tate, don't worry. 
find your husband? He's not here. Well, uh, you going into town? Yes. Well, my truck broke down. I have to get to the office. I wonder if you can give me a lift. If it isn't too much trouble. No trouble at all, Mr. Bannon. Thanks. driving for seven miles, haven't said a word. I clocked it. Must be some kind of record. I wouldn't know. Doesn't it suggest anything to you? Only that we have nothing to talk about. Or that we're not the talking kind. You've got a delicate sense of humor, Grace. Who told you you could call me Grace? You did. Just now with that smile. Your office is on Kohler Street, isn't it? That's right. Go down Oakwood, turn right. Now, Mr. Bannon, your thanks are all I have time for. This won't take long. I have to go. When I'm finished. All right. All right, you win. You get your dull little story off your big manly chest, but you make it fast, huh? Right. From the first time I saw you, and that was five years ago when I worked for Lanigan and Doyle, I haven't been able to stop looking. Not that I wanted to stop. Looking at you became one of the big pleasures of my life. Maybe the biggest. It got so I had you memorized. But I didn't realize that until I was overseas for a while. Then, all the other things began to get hazy. But I could close my eyes and see you just as clear. Not only your face, everything. Even the way the back of your legs look when you walk away. And all that time I've been wanting you. And I guess I'll probably go on wanting you until they shovel me into the ground. Here's your keys. something like that happens, don't call just any garage. Get hold of Jim Garrett. Even if it's only a flat? Well, that's my point. You can't be sure it's only a flat. Did they uh, look at the axle? Yes, sir. There didn't seem to be anything wrong with it. Well, Bannon doesn't sound like he was much help. I told you he wasn't there. I'd already dropped him off. Thursday. 
I'll see. I'll call you. When? As soon as I know my plans. And who makes those for you? I do. And when I know what they are, I'll let you know. Now, let's don't argue. It's been a lovely afternoon. Yeah, sure, what there was of it. You know, lately, it's been like you've been in such a damn rush. Well, if I don't get these to the Sentinel office, by 5 o'clock, they won't be in tomorrow's paper. Charity was ours. Well, it's my only excuse for being out today. Okay, okay. I wish I had a drink. I thought you didn't like to drink. That'll give you an idea of how good I feel. You know, once in a while, I'd like some time for a little conversation. I'm pretty good at that, too. Mm-hmm. Speak. Or maybe a hand of pinochle. Got the cards. Ideal. You messed my face again. Grace. I'm crazy about you. I'll be in touch. but we haven't seen much of you lately, Jack. Well, I've been hiding my light under a bushel. And the name of that bushel is the Fort Penn Sentinel. Your father would have been very proud of you. Maybe. Well, people say it's better now than when he was running it. Which would make him sore, but not necessarily proud. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, the reason I'm here... I know, I know. The annual spasm of the upper crust for the underprivileged. Oh, dear, does it look that bad? Well, charity's charity. How are you going to make it look like anything else? Well, maybe we shouldn't publicize it so much. If you didn't, nobody'd come. Jack, will you come this year? You know you never have. I'll make you a deal. I have to be here working half of the night, so I need a second wind. If you'll join me downstairs for a drink, I'll not only come, I'll bring the family savings. Agreed. Nothing for lifting up the heart like a devil martini. Well, you went twice. That makes a quadruple martini. Now you're a scorekeeper. Let me make sure I've got this all straight now. Thursday night, the publicity committee, 8.30, your office, huh? Yeah, and you tell them to be sure to wear shoes. We're going to have a photographer there. Jack, you remember the time I beat Eileen Young and the junior single said it's playing barefoot? I sure do. <laughs> Grace. Drive carefully, it's rush hour. I will. Goodbye, Jack. Goodbye. See you Thursday. something? Oh, just a list with some things on it for the carnival. Well, look at my big boy with the sleepy eye. Come on, time for night night. Say good night to daddy. Good night. Hey. <laughs> That's a good boy. That's a good boy. Come on. Time to go to bed. Come on. Here we go. Into the crib like a nice big boy. That's right. Good night, sweetheart. Good night, night. darling. I've got some more work to do in the book. Don't stay up too late.
Hello, is Mr. Bannon there? He's not in just now. Who's calling? Oh, never mind, thank you. Miss Grace? Oh, no, no, thank you. Mr. Sidney. After one of your lunches, I'll need it to stay awake. <laughs> thank you. Oh, dear. I'm running out of white index cards. I'm going to have to pick up some more in town. You know what? I'm a very happy man. Are you, Sidney? I've got you and Billy, a farm that's almost paid for. Now, what else is there? Nothing. Don't tell me you're happy, too. Let's make ourselves a promise that we'll always be as happy as we are right now. I promise. Miss Grace, telephone. Oh, dear. You want Emma to uh, leave supper for you? Oh, I don't think so. I'll get something before the meeting. I should be home by 10. Goodbye. Bye. Hello? Hello, who is this? Who do you think it is? What do you mean, calling here? I thought maybe you forgot my number. I can't talk now. When can I see you? You can't. Not anymore. Listen, Roger, did I leave... Grace. I saw you with that guy from the paper the other day. You go to hell. Grace. Thank you. Oh. Well, that does it, ladies. Jack, here have a few extra copies for the club bulletin board. Sure. Jim, uh, make up a dozen glossies, have them on my desk tomorrow, will you? You bet, Mr. Hollister. Thank you. You girls may not know it, but there happens to be a bar downstairs. So who's for a nightcap? Oh, <laughs> hallelujah. You have not yet given me the list of the prizes that were donated. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See you downstairs, Grace? Oh, I don't think so, Elsie. I'm bushed. But you'll be at my house tomorrow night at 8 o'clock with those tickets or all your money and no excuses. I swear by Hippocrates. <laughs> no. Good night, Mr. Hollis. Good night, Miss Martindale. Good night, ladies. Good night. I've uh, got a little private stock in case you're interested. Oh, I am very interested. Scotch or bourbon? Oh, scotch. Hmm? Let's see now. Myers haberdashery, one power mower. Oh, no, that can't be right. Oh, oh, Myers Hardware. Elsie's handwriting is a thing of beauty. Carter Leather Goods, one four-piece set of something like... What is that, Jack? Hmm? Matched. Matched luggage. Oh, matched luggage. I should have known that. Mm -hmm. Crowley Florists. No. Four dozen turnip bulls. <laughs> tulip bulls. Oh, tulip bulls. <laughs> Thank you. Grace. Jack, I can't. Would you uh, like to slap my face? Of course not. Still friends. Will Sidney and I see you tomorrow night? Sidney and I, that sounds... Very married. I hope so. Yes, I'll be there. Good night, Jack.
idiot. I almost hit you. I'm okay. Have you been drinking? Emma said you'd be in town tonight. You called the house again. Ah, oh, don't worry. I told her it was about some work for my mother. I wanted to apologize. It's not important. It's important to me. I'm in love with you. Oh, Roger. Sure, Moses. I know. We started off like a couple of animals, but it's not like that anymore. It's you I miss. I mean, wanting to be with you, to, to talk to you, to, to laugh with you. Oh, Grace, I need you. I need you. Roger. Now, look. Look, we'll get, we'll get married. I, I swear, I never in my life asked a woman to marry me before. Roger, both of us knew what this was. I couldn't stay away from you. All right, that's my fault, but... I've got a husband and a son that I love. <laughs> Who are you kidding? Who are you kidding? Let go of me. found yourself another stud. Now I'm supposed to get lost. Get away from me. Slut. Slut. Rich, lousy slut. the meeting? Okay. But it sure is nice to be home. Where did you find Squeaky? On the floor, as usual. Billy's been howling his head off for him. Well, shall we make a formal presentation? No, we'll just put it in this crib. And tomorrow we can say the Sandman bride. <laughs> I'd like to see my husband. Well, I'm afraid he isn't back yet. Mrs. Hollister. I wouldn't lie to you. Where is he? Out having another innocent drink with Grace Tate? Mrs. Hollister. Don't look so shocked. She's been after him for years. Well, he said he was going over to Cedarville to interview the new assemblyman. Number four. Sounds like someone's killing her. Call the cops.
Hello. Yeah, just one moment, please. Shopping tickets. Excuse me, Mr. Hollis. You're wanted on the telephone. Oh, it is? Somebody, please. Excuse me. You mean we really sell that many tickets? Hello? Yeah, Lou. Are you sure she said Caldwell? Where's the girl now? No, 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 no. You did the right thing, Lou. Now, stick with her. I'll be there in ten minutes. Yeah. to leave? Yes. Is something wrong? There won't be if we're lucky, Mrs. Tate. Apparently, you're not as married as I thought. Grace? Brock, what is going on here? Would you mind showing me the model of the concession booze again? Just listen. Roger Bannon's dead. Well, that tells me the rest of it. What happened? Hollister just got a call from one of his reporters. Apparently, Bannon was beating up some girl in a roadhouse. They called the police, and he was killed trying to get away. His car went off the road. Oh, my God. The girl says that he kept yelling her name while he was hitting her. A lot of other nice things about you. Brock, listen Grace, up. The point is that so far the reporter's been able to keep her from saying it to the police. Now, I told Hollister to go out there and make sure that she doesn't, but there's no guarantee. I know, Brock. Thank you. Grace, I only wish that. Could have been some real help to you back when it might have counted. I knew you'd want me to wait up for you. Thank you. That was very thoughtful. Wasn't it, though? Working at the paper, I know that much. And how do you know that much? Because I called there. Your detective work. Oh, I need a lot of detectives to know what's going on. Amy, there is nothing going on except in your head. You weren't at the Tates either. You called there. 
Yes, I called there. Why shouldn't I call there if I want to? You called there after how many of those? I don't know. I lost count. We don't have much left, do we, Amy? I suppose that's my fault. Do you know what I did tonight? I don't want to hear any more lies. Oh, why? Why should I bother? You don't give a damn about me. I set myself up for life in this town, and it doesn't mean a thing. I do give a damn about you, Amy. Just barely a damn, but that's not enough to hold a marriage together. It's Grace Jane, isn't it? Looks like everything. You sure it can be set up in time? Oh, yeah, Mrs. Tate. No problem. Oh, fine. My husband will give you a check as soon as he gets back, if that's all right. Yep. There you are. Thank you. Thank you. And since it is not the editorial policy of the Sentinel to engage in matters of this sort, I... Mr. Hollister's office. Yes, Mrs. Hollister. I'm sorry, but he's gone for the day. Uh, Mary, could you... Please tell me where he's staying. Mrs. Hollister, I can't. Well, could you give me his phone number? Well, he said I shouldn't. All right. I got your letter. Won't you come in? Thank you. It's after five. Shouldn't you be getting dressed? I told Billy he could stay up for the start of the carnival. Was that all right? Sure. Sydney, is anything wrong? Do you remember a Miss uh, Mildred Kimmel? Who? Her name was in the paper. She's the girl that uh, Roger Bannon was with the night he got killed. What about her? Well, I read the clipping again this afternoon. His uh, mother cut it out and saved it. Banning's mother? Yes. I know, Grace. What? I said I know. You know what? About Bannon. Sidney, what are you now, talking don't... about? Don't do that. I have been enough of a fool. Don't try to make a bigger one out of me. 
Harry, I swear. All right, then what? What was he doing with me? His mother found it in his room. That was after Miss Kimmel came around yesterday afternoon and tried to squeeze some money out of her. Not for the doctor bills, of course. I understand that Brock paid those. Cindy, you'll have to take my word. Stop lying! <laughs> She recognized your voice once when you called him. Get it through your head, I know. All right, now let's uh, start from there. Sidney, please let me try and make you understand. All right, Grace, you try to make me understand. I never loved him. Not for a second. I don't know how it happened. I love you always. That day I drove him into town, he wanted me. I, I knew it, he told me, so it just happened. I couldn't help myself. What about the other times? You had to work it out and make plans, didn't you? Yes. So you know what you were doing? Yes. But you went ahead and did it anyhow. I know. I know it was selfish and awful. But no matter what I've done, I love you. I love you. Can't you understand that? I'm not able to understand the kind of love that can turn around in a minute and kick your guts out. There's no love or regret here. You're just sorry you got caught. No, it was over. This one was over. All of it for good, I know. How? You think I couldn't have had other women since we've been married and a few that might surprise you. All I had to do was make the right noises. If you had, I'd try to forgive you. Well, I didn't. So your forgiveness won't be needed. And the reason I didn't doesn't make me a saint. But in this world, you either learn a set of rules or you don't. And if you learn them, you stick by them. They may be no damn good as rules go, but they're all you've got. Well, you said to hell with the rules and to hell with me, so Grace, the hell with you. We'll get through tonight somehow, but tomorrow it's goodbye. And I'm taking Billy with me. Sidney! For God's sake, you can't leave me. I'm sorry I can't live like this. I love you, but with any luck, that'll pass. It, it can't. I won't let it. You and Billy are all I've got in this world. I know myself. I know what'll happen if you leave me. Never, never any love, any meaning, any feeling. Is that so different from the way it's been up till now? You know it is. I told you about myself when you asked me to marry you. I risked losing you to do it because I love you. Doesn't that count for anything? Do our whole lives have to go up in smoke because I made one foolish mistake? How do I know it's only been one? Bannon! On my life, I swear it's Sidney, just Bannon! Hello there, young fella. Uh, Hello, doctor. 
Seven pounds, three ounces. They'll never forget a face. Huh? How are you, Sidney? Fine, thanks. Excuse me, Mr. Sidney. It's eight o'clock. Oh, thanks, Emma. Good night, sir. Yeah, I thought it was past your bedtime. <laughs> Good night. Come on, Billy, it's sleepy time. Where's Grace? I saw her with Brock just a few minutes ago. Over there. Grace, I hope it works out. I don't know. It will. It has to. Do you invite Amy Hollister? Well, no, I thought you said they were separated. That's what I understood. All right, ladies. Amy, I'm glad you could come. Where's my husband? What? You heard me. Well, isn't he with you? You know damn well he's not. Where is he? Amy, why don't we go outside? Huh? What's the matter? Are you afraid of your reputation? I'm trying not to embarrass you. <laughs> I've got nothing to be embarrassed about. I'm not sleeping with somebody else's husband. Amy, listen, why don't we go outside? Get your hands off me. I'll say whatever I want. Shut up. You steal somebody else's husband, and she's supposed to shut up. You don't have that much money, you tramp. You're crazy. <laughs> he admitted it. 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 He admitted it.